Guardianships 101. Hi, I'm Darren Finling of The Probate Pro, and we're going to cover the ins and outs of guardianships, explain the process, the difference between the different types of fiduciary roles affecting people that are in need of protection, and walk you through a petition relating to the appointment of a guardian. Let's get right at it. It can be really confusing to remember the difference between a guardianship and a conservatorship. The best way to remember the difference between a guardian and a conservator and their respective responsibilities and duties is to look at the root of each of the words, guard, guardianship. It addresses issues relating to the care and well-being of another person. Conserve, think of conserving money. A conservator is responsible for the financial issues relating to an individual upon which they're serving as the conservator. That's the easiest way to remember the difference between these two different fiduciary roles. Now remember, one person may be performing both the role of guardian and conservator, or it could be two different people. Let's make matters even a little more confusing by adding in another fiduciary role, that being an attorney in fact created through a power of attorney. To differentiate between an attorney in fact through a power of attorney and a guardianship and conservatorship is to understand that they're created differently. An attorney in fact through a power of attorney is an estate planning document. It's done when an individual has the capacity to create this document to plan for the future. On the other hand, a guardian and conservator is generally done after they lack capacity, done through a court order. So of course, we urge you to plan ahead. Create the attorney, in fact, through a power of attorney, so you get to control and direct who your fiduciary will be. On the other hand, if you don't have that in place, you can go to court through a petition and establish a guardian or conservatorship. Let's look at the definitions again. A guardian is a person appointed by a probate court and given the power and responsibilities relating to care and custody. On the other hand, a conservator is appointed by a probate court given the power relating to financial and legal related decisions. An attorney, in fact, is not created by court, but rather is authorized to act in an estate planning document called the power of attorney. Now, this type of power of attorney can come in a variety of forms. You've probably heard of a durable power of attorney as well as powers of attorney relating to health care, like a patient advocacy. These are all different types of agency principal relationships through a power of attorney. The elements to establish the basis for the creation of a guardianship are set forth here. A guardian may be needed when a person is unable to manage their personal affairs because of mental illness, dementia, age, infirmity, physical illness, disability, chronic use of alcohol or intoxicants. Now, interestingly, age itself could be a basis, which means you may not lack capacity, but you may be old enough such that the need for a guardianship exists. And this standard in Michigan is done through clear and convincing evidence. The basic duties relating to a guardian's role are pretty straightforward. Achieve the best possible well-being for the individual. How you do that is really the magic. Some guardians are great and some not so great. One of the requirements in Michigan is that there must be a personal visit at least once every 90 days. Now for somebody that lives with the individual or the guardian lives with the ward, that's quite simple. But a professional agency is at least required to come out at least once every 90 days. As we talked about the guardian being responsible to guard over the individual, let's talk about some of their general powers. Their powers are defined and created by a court order, and on the letter of guardianship, it will identify any limitations or restrictions relative to their powers. They generally have the power for placement, medical treatment and related decisions, the right to hire an attorney, Generally, a guardian does not have financial authority, although it can be created by court order. The only thing that a guardian inherently has the right to do under current law is to be able to become the representative payee for Social Security benefits. 
If a guardian identifies that the individual has assets, that would be the basis for the filing of a petition to establish a conservatorship. So how do you do it? How do you create a guardianship? Well, you do so by filing a petition. And here it is a state court administrative order form, PC 625, that creates the beginning of this procedure called a guardianship. I'm only showing you page one of this petition. It's pretty basic. It asks for relevant information relating to the whereabouts of the individual, their date of birth, as well as it identifies who is the petitioner, who is asking of the court to bring forth the request for the appointment of a guardian. On page two, it would identify who you're nominating to serve in that guardian role. It's important to understand that anybody interested in the well-being of another person can commence that guardianship petition. The guardianship petition is filed in the probate court in which that individual is a resident. It is then scheduled for hearing, and I'm going to walk you through the general timeline relating to the filing of a guardianship. Let's walk through a timeline of how that guardianship process works. Understand this is just an illustration, a simplified explanation of this process, but it does highlight the key things that are necessary in the filing of a petition for guardianship. First, we're gonna get some written evidence from a medical provider indicating the basis and need for that guardianship. Most courts will accept either the state court approved form for doing that, or any writing from a medical provider indicating the basis and need for that guardianship. From there, the petition is filed. The petition that I just went over with you is filed with the probate court as asserting the basis and need for that guardianship. It's calendared and scheduled for hearing. Between the filing of the petition and the hearing, somebody from the court called a guardian ad litem will go out and do a visit. A guardian ad litem is really the eyes and ears of the court to be able to write a report and recommendation on the basis of that guardianship. It allows the judge to get more information about what's going on. From there, a hearing will occur. It occurs in front of a judge and the judge makes a determination if there's a need for a guardian based on clear and convincing evidence that's brought forth by the petitioner. From there, letters of guardianship are issued, and these really provide the power and authority for the guardian to act. On a, each year, on the calendar anniversary of the initial appointment of letters of guardianship, there's a requirement for the guardian to complete an annual report of guardian. That annual report identifies how that person is doing and whether there's a basis and need for that guardianship to continue from year that year one to year two and so on and so forth. The process will continue until such time as the person either dies or there is a termination of the guardianship. That's the basic timeline for guardianship related issues. At the Probate Pro, we're passionate about guardianship and probate related issues. If you have any questions about these issues, give us a call 833-PROBATE or visit us at theprobatepro.com.